How's it going guys? This is Luke from Coffee House and today we're going to make a little bit of a reiteration of one of our most popular videos and that was about making a brew recipe with this Mocha Master here. In the last three years or so since we filmed that, things have changed. Our recipes have changed. Uh, Mocha Masters have even changed a little bit, even though the original outfit of the design has been around since the 70s. But yeah, so today we're going to do a little bit of a tutorial on how I think you can make the perfect cup of Mocha Master coffee at home. We're gonna do two different iterations of the recipe. We're gonna do a half pot and a full pot, so maybe you're making some for just you, or maybe you're making some for your whole family. Maybe there's two of you who like to drink a couple of cups in the morning, something like that. But there's a couple different steps along the way, and what we're gonna do is kinda approach it step by step, talk a little bit about each step and why I think it's important, and then uh, we're gonna taste some coffee. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the most important part of your coffee, and that is actually your water. Since water makes up 98% of your coffee drinking experience, it's really important that we take some considerations as to what we're doing with that water and how we're getting that water. One thing I always recommend, as you may see in other videos, are the third wave water packet. Essentially what these are are little mineral compounds that you add to a gallon of distilled water which essentially creates the perfect blend of mineral water for your coffee. This balance of minerals is focused on making your coffee taste as perfect as possible. It's gonna be bright, floral, poppy, and all the things you want out of your coffee instead of muted, muddled, things of that nature. So first things first, what we're gonna do is take our third wave water and mix that into a gallon, which we've already done. And next, we're gonna go ahead and add that water to here. So. I usually eyeball it, you know, in theory, you wanna measure out 500 grams exactly, but I always eyeball it, like I said. Uh, I go to the halfway mark right there. This is um, liters, by the way, on the left. So if we go to the halfway mark, we're at 500 milliliters, which is exactly where we wanna be. So I'm gonna do that now. But yeah, so now we're at half here. What we're gonna do now is weigh out some coffee. All right, so we've got a couple things in front of us. We've got some coffee, which you can buy on our website. This is our own coffee. We roast here at Coffee House HQ. Would love to you know, hear your feedback about it, everything like that. We have a little deli container, and we also have an Akaya Lunar Scale here, which is also on the website. The Lunar is the best. You know, We will make more and more videos about these, and you will always see these featured in our videos. I just think they're kind of the best of the best in terms of scales, not only for coffee, but for anything you want to weigh out. Anyways, let's go ahead, tear this. And for 500 milliliters of water, I'm gonna shoot for kind of a one to 15 ratio, which lands me at about 33 grams. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh out 40 grams because I'll show you why next. All right, so I weighed out 40 grams of coffee here, and what I'm gonna go do now is put it through our grinder. This right here is a fellow owed Gen 1 with Gen 2 burrs, so it's been a little bit upgraded, but um, this is something that we've talked a lot about. I'm sure you can watch many of videos about this, and I'm sure many of you already know about these. They are amazing pour over slash batch brew grinders. I really love them. I think the materiality and the reliability is really great. But anyways, let's go ahead and put this through there. I'm gonna be putting it at about, let's say, yeah, right there. I'd say two clicks off of one, one click off of two. These grinders, I've talked about it before, but you're gonna to need to go almost all the way to one to be able to get kind of like the ideal there. But yeah, so for those with an owed Gen 1 with Gen 2 burrs, I know it's a specific audience, but we're grinding one notch under two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that through now. All right, so we have 40 grams of ground coffee here, but if you remember, I mentioned that I'm gonna put in about 33 here. But what I'm gonna do before I actually put this through is use another cool little tool that I really like for the kind of the home grinder setup. A lot of problems you see with home grinders that are cheaper are that there's a wide uh, variation between the grind size. So you're getting coarse pieces, you're getting perfectly ground pieces, 
and then you're also going to get a little bit more fines. So those fines are what contribute to your coffee tasting more muddy and less desirable overall. Those are actually soluble in water, so it's going to get in there and it's gonna taste more like a French press if there's too many fines. So what we're gonna to do to alleviate that is we're gonna add it to the Fellow Shimmy. Um, there are other different brands that make similar products like the Kruv Sifter, for example, but essentially what it is, is it is a little sifter here that's going to sift out all of the fines. This sifter is rated for 200 microns, so what we're gonna do is pour the whole 40 grams in here, and then what we're gonna do is shake this, get all those fines out of there, and then weigh out 33 grams after. Okay, so now that I added the 40 grams of coffee into the shimmy, what I'm gonna do is just give it a shake for about 30 seconds, and that's gonna get all of those fines out. And like I said, by eliminating those fines, we're avoiding any kind of muddy taste to our coffee. We want, at the end of the day, a clear, crisp, well-defined cup of coffee. So let's do that now. So what we have here, if we remove the bottom, are all of the fines. And it looks like we got quite a few there. So that right there is what we have avoided going into our actual coffee, which is, I mean, for me, let's actually weigh it out and see. In this, in this 30 second shake or so, we collected, let's see, 2.7 grams of fines, which is pretty significant in the world of 40 grams. Now what I'm gonna do is weigh this back out, weigh out 33 grams, and then we're gonna put it into the Milk Master here and start our brew. So we have our 33 grams of coffee here, but before we put it in, there's one more step, and that is to add our paper filter here. But what we're gonna to wanna to do before we put this paper filter to the test is we're gonna to wanna to wash it with the same water that we were using earlier uh, to pour into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So the reason I'm doing this is because if we were to not wet our paper filter prior to brewing, we would be getting a papery taste in our, um, in our coffee. And that's something obviously we don't want. If you ever have some free time and you're really, really bored, go ahead and dip a paper filter in a little bit of water and then taste that water, you'll totally understand what I mean. So as you can see, our paper filter is fully wet. And now all we have to do is pour the coffee into the filter. Then we just reattach it right here. So before we start brewing here, there is one thing I wanna talk about, and a lot of questions I'm gonna get is, uh, this guy, why aren't you using the brew arm? Um, this, not everybody obviously has this yet, so I wanna do a demonstration with the regular brew arm here. For those who are uninitiated, this is something that we came up with as an invention uh, about a couple months ago, and we're working to make sure that this can become stainless steel so it can actually look the part. But essentially, it is a updated shower head where you can see we've got double the holes there. And so this is gonna create a better saturation for your coffee overall. But um, you know, it's not finished yet, so I don't wanna just put it in there yet. You know, we've done a lot of pre-orders so far and those are being produced. But without this being fully finished, I wanna demonstrate this in the, you know, as you would get it from Mocha Master. And as we begin to brew, a uh, couple quick little notes is I don't really need to keep this guy on. I don't even really know where this is at my house, honestly. Uh, I don't use it all that often just because I'm gonna do something that I think uh, this kind of gets in the way. So anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna turn this to the half pot setting on here. That will slow the flow rate of the water coming out, which is good because we're only doing half a pot. You want the flow rate to be a little bit slower so you can get that proper saturation of your grounds. But any second, we start to hear the water boiling and what it's gonna do is spit this water over and that first initial drop we're gonna to wanna to take this bar spoon or any type of stirring utensil, and we're gonna just kinda of give it a little bit of a stir as to saturate all of the grounds when it comes out. So the water is coming out here. What I'm gonna go do now is just reach in here and just start to stir my grounds just a little bit to evenly saturate everything. Creating a kind of like bloom with this and making sure that all of your coffee is properly saturated is going to yield a better cup overall. So now that we're properly grounds distributed, I can go ahead, set my spoon aside, and just let it do its thing. After everything is done brewing, you can go ahead, turn it off as to not continually heat your coffee, which is something we tend to want to avoid. And then you're off to the races. Um, what I think you'll get out of this cup is an amazingly bright, 
fresh, crisp cup of coffee that I think is going to be exactly what you're looking for. After we finish, I'm gonna do a quick little taste test and then we're gonna go into the second brew recipe, which is really the same thing. I'm gonna kind of speed it up for everybody, but I'm going to double some stuff. I'm gonna maybe change a little bit on the grind settings here and we'll explore that as we move along. All right, so we've just finished up our brew here. I went ahead and turned off the Mocha Master because we don't need any of that heat. And now all that's left is a little bit of a taste test. And so all of this, what seems like a lot of effort later, yields you one of the best tasting cups of coffee that you're going to get at the home level at all. What you're doing here is replicating a lot of different commercial level activities to help yield you a cup that I think you know, since you have control of all these variables, odds are this is a better cup of coffee than you would get at a cafe because, you know, their coffee sits in urns, things like that for a long time. You just don't know. But at least you know with this that you're going to get a crisp, fresh, very, very well dialed cup of coffee. This is, without a doubt, the best way to make coffee with your Mocha Master. You know, and I know there's a lot of extra steps involved, but if you're like me, chasing that pursuit you know, of excellence behind this cup of coffee, this is what it's about. I've found this setup to be ideal, and I know there might be slight variations in your setup, you know, especially with the grinder. It's gonna take you some time to find that perfect grind setting, for example, and dial in exactly what you want it to taste like. But with all of that said, this is the type of setup that I would like to see in you know every home. I think everybody deserves to taste coffee that is this good at the home level. And yeah, it might take some steps, but I think it's definitely worth it. Without further ado, let's jump into the second brew recipe. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit. Feel free to not watch it if you're only a kind of one cup person, but I have some closing thoughts afterwards that I think you'll uh, you know enjoy and we can go from there. All right, so brew recipe number two. This is for if you're gonna have more than one person drinking coffee, maybe you really, really like drinking coffee, but what it's gonna be is a larger recipe, more full format, and there's some slight changes that we're gonna to wanna to make, so what I'm gonna do is do those now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually reduce our dose just a little bit. We're actually gonna to go to 60 grams on the dose, so I'm gonna measure those out now, but remember, I'm gonna measure a little bit more because I'm gonna shake out a lot of those fines. It's just a rule of thumb. I usually go maybe five grams above just to account for that loss. So another quick change we're gonna do is actually click the grinder two clicks from where I was. Like I said, every grinder's different, but I'm gonna do two steps away from the fine setting that I was at. And that's because with more coffee and more water, it's gonna take more time for that water to pass through the grinds. So with that extra time, what it's going to do is cause more of an extraction to take place as water passes through. And if there's more coffee, as time goes on, you're gonna get potentially over-extracted coffee. With that said, by increasing the actual grind size, it's gonna allow water to move a little bit faster beneath the larger dose of coffee, which is what we have here. So let's go ahead and put this through and then do the brew. And so now we're gonna go back into the shimmy here. Just put all of those in there. I like these little delis because you can fold them like this. And also the odes have like those nice little metal fins so you can do that as well. All right, so what we're gonna do next is actually weigh out the 60 grams for our dose. And you can see again, just how many fines we actually got out of that shake, which is really awesome to see. You know, that's something we definitely don't want in our coffee. And so, like I said before, before we actually add the coffee into our filter, we're gonna go ahead and wet this filter with the same water that we're gonna add to that top hopper in just a second. So again, as you see, we have a fully saturated paper filter here, which is where we will then add our 60 grams of coffee. Lastly, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and add the liter of water in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, just go ahead and pour that in. So now that we have a full liter of water here, what we're gonna do is the same thing we've been doing, pop that on, turn this on, and then break out our trusty spoon, which is what we're gonna use to agitate that initial bloom, you know, make sure all the grounds are properly saturated. And one thing you're actually gonna to wanna to do is take this switch right here and move it to the full pot setting because what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna speed up the flow rate of your water 
which will help kind of move things along a little quicker. If you were to switch it to the half pot, it may slow your flow rate, which might be something that's desirable as we get down the road. But for, for this sake, we're gonna want this faster flow rate because of the amount of coffee that's actually in here. So now that we're finished brewing here, we have another cup of coffee that might have taken a little bit longer, but you know, large uh, brew here. One thing I do want to note is that if you see inside of this filter that your coffee is rising above the filter and starting to go over the sides, that is an indication that you either have too much coffee or more importantly, you ground it a little too fine. Coffee in that brew cycle should take about five or six minutes, not any much longer than that. So it's something to consider as you start dialing things with your own personal grinder at home, it's an important thing to look at. So same thing here. We did all of kind of the right steps again, and the coffee's still tasting nice, fresh, crisp, amazing. It's exactly what we want out of this, and that's because we started with all of the right tools and we did all of the right prep. As I said in the previous one, all of these individual steps are very important in yielding a really exceptional cup of coffee. And I think I thank this most to one, the Mocha Master, for its ability to heat consistently and flow water consistently. And two, we have to thank Third Wave Water for contributing such a perfect minerality for something like this, because that water is so important to the way that this tastes. And even if you started with tap water or even spring water or anything like that, which is too high of a TDS, by the way, for brewing like this, brewing good coffee, it's something you're gonna wanna think about is, you know, water is, such an important makeup of the cup of coffee that you're drinking, it's better to really consider that. And I think, you know, as coffee moves forward, a lot of people didn't really tend to talk about that more so the coffee, but I think the water is just as equally as important as the coffee you're putting in there. And I think that's everything I have for you. You know, there are a lot of steps here involved with making kind of the perfect Mocha Master cup of coffee, but this I've found to be completely foolproof once you get it down. It's insanely impressive it replicates or maybe even improves on cafe level coffee. And this way with all of the variables controlled, the water, the grind, the dose, even the actual particle size, all of these things will contribute to a better tasting cup of coffee because not only can you have a good cup of coffee, but you can compare the coffee that's next to it. Different roast date, different origin, different process, different roaster, all of those things are very important because if there's all these different changing variables like temperature or flow rate or water quality or grind size, those things will all take away from your ability to adequately understand the difference in special coffees. So whether it's washed, natural, all of those things, you wanna be able to taste and understand the difference between those. And this right here is how you do it. We've eliminated all of the variables in my mind except for coffee. And when we can do that, we can then start to really understand what's in our cup. That's everything I have for you. I'm Luke from Coffee House, and I appreciate you tuning in and watching this. If you've made it to the end, thank you. All of these items are available in our shop right down in the description below. So if you want to check anything out, please do so. And secondly, if you want to leave a comment, you know, I'm there to respond to them, answer questions, everything like that. And I really encourage you to do so. Thanks for tuning in. Again, I'm Luke from Coffee House, and we'll see you next time. And then it's like coffee house. Do it right when I do that. <laughs> Ow.